Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well and today we're doing a box office breakdown for this past weekend which saw Alien Romulus get in well over what the expectations were for the film going into the weekend and easily enough for it to take the number one spot finally away from Deadpool and Wolverine. So a very impressive feat in that regard. However, of course, we're going to continue to call out the likes of Tony and other box office mainstream shills who continue to ignore reality and continue to compare films in very unfair ways because the other thing that's being talked about when it comes to this movie, at least domestically, according to Tony, is that it is the second best opening for the entire franchise. That's right. So not only is he trying to pull out really weird records, like it's the record opening for Fed for for, uh, for Fade Alvarez. It's the uh, it's the franchise or it's the best opening weekend for Kaylee uh, for Kaylee Spaney. Again, very random things to pull out there. Pulling out the second best of the franchise is just downright disingenuous, especially when you look at the actual totals of those movies when adjusted for inflation, or at the very least, look at what the estimated ticket sales opening weekend looked like for those movies. Now, this is coming from someone who was actually, uh, overall, I enjoyed Alien Romulus. I had a very good time with it. Everyone in my theater also had a very good time with it as well, and so I'm not surprised to see the film doing as well as it is. And I do suspect the film is right now on pace to be able to make its money back probably very easily, if I had to guess. With about an $80 million reported budget, this is a movie that is doing strong enough, well over $100 million worldwide, in fact, that I do think that this film will probably be able to lank out to get to that break-even point, to get to that profitability territory. The real question is going to be how close does it get or how far past that break-even point does it actually get. We also have some updates on a couple other films, including It Ends With Us, Twisters, and, of course, Deadpool and Wolverine, and its comparison domestically with the other film of the year that is set to be probably at this point the number one film of 2024 and not much else out there or not much else to be released that's I think going to come even close to its total amount and that is of course its comparison with Inside Out 2. Before going any further though please make sure you smash that like button a lot of that fire button over on Aussie smash the rumble button as well also make sure that you are subscribed hit that bell that way you know every time the video live stream goes live on the channel. So again, Tony over at Deadline trying to, again, you know, make things up a bit, right? $41 million opening. Again, very impressive. Record opening for Fade Alvarez. Again, not really saying much in that as far as his filmography is concerned. It's like, okay, really wouldn't say you would have to say a record opening. Again, it seems like a kind of grasping at straws there. Also, it's a record opening for Kaylee Spaney because, of course, everyone knows who that actress is. I mean, don't get me wrong. Her name has a little bit more recognition than some of the other unknown actors that are, you know, that are out there in Hollywood. But to say that she is a household name by any means is, again seemingly trying to make the film out to be more than what it actually is. And then the big whopper to me, the real actual lie, is second best opening for the franchise. Oh, Tony, 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 when are you going to actually learn? So let's go ahead and just go back in time. Now, we're not going to go back all the way to the 1970s, 1980s, and all of the Alien vs. Predator spinoff movies, right? We're not going to even look at those. Let's just go back to really when this, 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 this film, this universe was reboot in many ways, like was continued on, picked up with back in 2012 with the film called Prometheus. So one thing that's interesting is how much more money Prometheus cost, around $167 million when you adjust for inflation. So we're talking about Romulus costing half of the amount of Prometheus, and there's a lot of effects in Romulus that I would say look so much better than in Prometheus, mostly because they're using a lot of practical effects in Romulus, though I will say, of course, the CG effects that are used, especially one of a specific character that's a bit of a throwback callback character, is atrocious in Romulus, whereas the, at least with the Prometheus uh, CG characters, they look okay. They look serviceable. They don't look at least nearly that bad in comparison, but... I digress. Let's go ahead then and dive into just the comparison of actual movie numbers here, right? So if you look at the opening weekend numbers for that of, uh, if you look to the opening weekend numbers to that of the alien uh, film Prometheus, $68 million is what the adjusted for inflation number is there. And what kind of drives me absolutely nuts about that too is that 
He is, again, talking about domestic numbers, saying it is the best of the franchise. And yet, part of me wonders exactly what films is he actually comparing? Is he including the Prometheus film, which is definitely a part of the Alien universe, in that equation? Or is he just comparing it to Alien Covenant, which, again, adjusted for inflation, rate around $45.2 million, around $36 million on adjusted. My guess is, is that he must be going off of Prometheus, but that doesn't make a lot of sense to me because that film, Unadjusted, had about a 50, fifty-one million million dollar opening weekend based off of the numbers from the numbers.com and so again I think that these are, are just once again signs that Tony is just not being honest about any of these things things have become even that much more obvious and that much more apparent when you look at the estimated ticket sales okay so Prometheus 6.4 million tickets versus the Alien Covenants 4 million tickets Alien Romulus only coming in at 3.1 million tickets for this weekend because of, again, the fact that the average ticket price from 2017 versus 2024 has gone up so much. And when a lot of these tickets are coming from these higher premium formatted screens that cost so much more money, ultimately, there are a lot less people going to see Romulus than there are who have seen films like Alien Covenant or especially compared to that of even of Prometheus. So... Once again, Tony not being very honest here with his overall numbers, and I do think that these numbers need to be understood within their proper context. That all being said, Romulus still is a solid film. It's still getting mostly positive reviews. I think that there are definitely out people out there that are hating on the movie, and mostly it's hardcore fans. And again, I can respect hardcore fans for having issues with some of the choices that are made, some of the things that, especially in the grand scheme of the story, the overarching story of Alien, this now being this quote-unquote interquel, right, being between the events of Alien and aliens it seems to again raise some questions about those characters that you see in some because there's also there's certain things that are referencing from not just those original movies but also even from you know talking about alien 3 and beyond and so i think that i understand why there are people that have issues with it but ultimately most people i think coming out of this movie are enjoying it, are finding it to be a fun thrill ride. And I know that was my own personal experience with it, which is why on Critic List, I, I gave it an overall rad score. But the numbers are what they are. And though this is impressive for its opening weekend, in comparison to the last couple of films in this universe, it is definitely not as impressive and in fact coming in at the low end and we could say that of the modern era it is the lowest opening weekend of the alien franchise of the modern era again not looking back even at the 1970s and 80s becomes a little bit more complicated with those movies just because of how movies were released at that time especially if you look at those global numbers the budgets and things of that sort um, one could easily see though that those movies were ex insanely more successful especially those first two versus that of the likes of Romulus. So again, calling out Tony once again. Uh, Nancy, good old Nance, nothing really to, to call out here other than just again, $108 million globally is just really, really darn impressive. That's $44 million, $41 million domestic, $66 million international. Could be a film that we might see that can that, that split continue on. If we see that type of 60-40 split down the line, I think that you could probably end up seeing about 100, you know, sorry, about, a, yeah, probably about $200 million domestic or more, and then maybe upwards of three to $400 million international if we see those kinds of splits continue on, which means ultimately this film is going to do quite well, especially for that $80 million budget. Alien Rhyme is going to the to the numbers.com. As we can see from this uh, weekend chart, Alien Romulus, 20th Century Studios, 41.5 million. That's around $10,000 per screen. So definitely not the best per theater ratio that we've ever seen, but still very, very strong. Uh, not nearly as strong down the line, though, as a film like Deadpool and Wolverine, which has now been out for four weeks and after four weeks, the film's still making $29 million in a weekend. That's only dropping 46%. So as of right now, with where these films have been dropping, it's looking like Deadpool and Wolverine has a great chance of doubling what it, what it made in the first two weeks of its initial release, which would put the ultimate number around 1.3 to 1.4 billion. Now, that's exactly where it is currently standing in the domestic market. The real question mark is going to be those international numbers. It doesn't seem like those international numbers are going to be coming to play into the same way or to the same degree as it was for a film like Inside Out 2. But again, just based off of how these typical metrics work, based on how my own personal charting works, usually when you're starting to see drops of in that 50%, 46% in this case range, four weeks out from, in this, from its initial release, it means it's holding on to at least half its audience every single week. And again, that means that from those first two weeks, you're still making a lot of money left, a lot of money down the line. And again, not nearly as good as the 30% drop range that we were seeing for the likes of Despicable Me 4 or even Inside Out 2, right? Still Inside Out 2 in the 34% range, still 
still very, very strong, especially for the kind of movie that it is. And this movie is still set to make bank again. Easily going to get, it's, I, I would say, easily going to get to $600 million in the next couple of weeks and ultimately could make a lot more than that down the line also. It ends with us, the Blake Lively starring film that's gotten some controversy more so for the content of the movie versus that of the performances or versus that of even how the film has been doing at the box office, right? This movie right now, number three at the box office, $24 million. So losing out this time to Ted Bull and Wolverine, dropping 52%. So again, a decent drop off there. A film definitely that did better than what anyone could have anticipated and a film that's already made money. I think that's really the big story with this movie is that it not only broke even on its opening weekend and started making profits, it's now, of course, since then going to now be able to just run with that number. It's now going to continue to add on to those profits every single week that goes by. So it's going to be very interesting to see where that film ultimately ends up. The film Twisters at number four dropping another another 35%. This is another movie where the two weeks number is probably going to be um, by the end of the run probably will, will double what it did in those first two weeks, meaning it's tracking towards that higher end of my charting. Uh, but remember, because this film costs so much to make, even if it does hit that higher end, profitability in the theaters, still not a likely chance or still not uh, most likely the gonna going to be the end result. Just remember that when it comes to Twisters, though, being a universal property, there's going to be some deal behind the scenes to get it onto a streaming service. They're going to make a lot of money from those sales. And so Twisters in the long run is definitely going to be a, uh, a financial success uh, as far as the box office success is concerned. The numbers really aren't there at this point, though it's definitely getting quite close and there's definitely a chance for it to still be able to even break even at the theater, uh, but it still does have a little ways to go as it's now been out for five weeks. And then drop, cracking into the top five of all films is actually a 15 year old movie now. And that is the film Coraline from the studio Leica. Love their films. Coraline is a solid one. Usually people's top movie. For me, Kubo and the Two Screens, Tubo and the Two Strings might be my absolute favorite. Coraline is still up there as well. This movie, though, $8.3 million in its return after 15 years. This film, again, 811 weekends out uh, from its initial release. And so that's $5.4 thousand dollars per screen, doing better than Twisters, doing better than a lot of the other films on those lists. So kudos to Fathom Events and kudos to Coraline. Cor line for being able to uh, to bring a lot of people out to go see their film. It's interesting also to see films like Coraline getting these 15 year releases and in many ways doing better than some of the larger Disney properties that get these types of releases. Again, kind of shows you where the fan bases are and where the passionate fan bases are in the long run. Uh, and that rounds up the top five. The only other couple that I'll mention there is Big Me 4 dropping 25% after seven weeks. Trap, 48% after three weeks. And again, so still hanging around a little bit, uh, but still has a ways to go. Inside Out 2 still making bank. 34% drop there, $3.2 million. And so you could see it's slowing down a bit. So probably now looking closer to between uh, six fifty and $700 million domestic by the end. Borderlands is the other one too, where after two weeks of release we can now say yeah a 73 percent drop Whew, that is abysmal that's one of the worst drops you can see when you had such a low opening weekend and then you add on top of that a massive week two drop that is automatically spelling disaster we're talking about 100 to 150 million dollars in financial losses for lionsgate when it comes to the release of Borderlands. Let's go to the international numbers here from the numbers. So again, Alien Romulus, $108.2 million. Again, very impressive numbers at this point. Deadpool Wolverine at $1.142 billion. As you can see, going to cross $600 million in the course of the next couple of days. Uh, and we'll get those numbers officially updated at, by, the, by the end of next weekend. It's still on pace to be able to get to upwards of $600 million in the uh, domestic. And so that's the reason why at least $1.2 you're going to see. But I think there's enough strength for it to go well beyond the $600 million international well beyond even that of the uh, 600 million domestic. And that's why, again, I think 1.3 to 1.4 billion right now is looking like it's going to be where that film ends up. To give you kind of a comparison between these two movies, we've, we've talked about it now. Uh, I think last week we took a, a, a day off from this comparison, but this is the domestics for Inside Out 2 versus Deadpool and Wolverine. And remember, because Deadpool Wolverine had such a huge advantage in the opening weekend, it's been ahead of it from that time. Now, four weeks into the release, okay? So looking and comparing like-for-like like numbers at the same point of release. What's interesting here is that you actually do actually have a day that Deadpool is able to win against 
the likes of Inside Out 2. 12.5 million on its fourth Saturday versus the 11.2 million dollars that was made by uh, Inside Out 2. You, it does have to, of course, be noted here that we are starting to see right this the difference, the the separation between them is definitely dropping quite a bit. Right, you look at the Monday comparisons: five to eight, seven to eleven, five to seven, four to seven, eight to ten. So definitely a couple of million dollars every single day advantage at least for Inside Out 2 being able to slowly again chip away at those numbers but still 545 versus 534 means Deadpool is still ahead and as I mentioned right I do think that you're going to start to see right that this change you're going to start to see these numbers get a little bit more even let's look at the chart here as you can see right it does definitely seem to drop during the course of the week but then it's the weekend that it really is able to kind of get back on track and so if we see something similar happen with this right we had a little bit more of a drop off here a little bit more of a flattening here for inside ad two I think that you're going to see this again this line continue to track as it is and I do think that probably around the time that it crosses 600 million maybe a little bit before then that's when you are going to see i think inside at two take the advantage and then inside at two is going to end probably in that 650 to 750 million dollar range sorry 650 to 700 million dollar range and then i could see it, i could see deadpool wolverine ending between 600 and 650 still a lot of days left in the release of um in the release of deadpool wolverine not as many days left in the release of inside out two again that one's probably getting a little bit closer to the end of its release uh but still i think inside out 2 will probably end up still taking out the number one domestic box office film of the year and probably also internationally globally as well and so again we'll, we'll talk about that um, as we get closer and also when it officially gets crossed over when that eventually does happen it, it ends with us 179 million dollars again very impressive numbers here for what it is twisters 326 million dollars again impressive for what it is and then Coraline. Uh, still, the fact that it was able to make around $8 million when the film itself in its initial release, this is unadjusted, of course, didn't seem to be that impressive on paper, is also really, really cool to see. So again, kudos to them for having a successful re-release in the actual theaters. Now, let's go to the charts because we love charts here on OMB Reviews so we can make some projections now. So it ends with us. It's now at the end of its first two weeks. And so with $149 million worldwide, we can project the film will make somewhere between $212 and $298 million by the end of its run because it only had a $25 million reported budget. That means that as of this point, we're projecting it to make probably in the 90 to $140 million range. If I had to you know, pinpoint that more, probably 100 to $130 million if I had to take a guess. But as of right now, because of where it is making its money, it is looking at around $49 million in net profits. Uh, if you look at the actual numbers using the actual cuts from the st for the studio uh, versus the theaters, both domestically and internationally. So very, very impressive there for it ends with us. Not the same story at all when it comes to the likes of Borderlands, because this film after one week has only made twenty one million dollars. Sorry, after two weeks has only made twenty one million dollars. And that means that I'm projecting it to make between thirty and forty two million worldwide by the end of its run. With a 115 reported, 115 million dollar reported budget, that means we're projecting it to lose between 154 and 147 million as of the recording of this video. We are looking at that currently being around 161 million dollars in net losses. I do would not be surprised if it is if it ended near 150 million dollars in net losses because no one's seeing this film. It's dropping off like a a massive rock off of a cliff, and so 150 million dollar loss. Probably a likely scenario at this point. Going to be one of the biggest box office bombs of 2024. And uh, based off of what I've been hearing about the film, can't say I'm all that surprised by it. The one thing we can say about Alien Romulus, as I mentioned before, it's in this opening weekend, so there's only limited things we can do. But if we remember that most of the time, films make about a third of their entire box office in their opening weekend if it has a standard run. If that indeed is the case for Alien Romulus, if we see some very average holds in that 40 to 55% uh, percent drop in week two, uh, especially... You know, excuse me, in the domestic market, I do think that you're probably going to see the film be able to have that chance of getting upwards of 300 plus million dollars at the global box office because the film did cost 80 million dollars. It means that you have to make roughly 200 million dollars to be able to break even. And we could add on to that to say that maybe just maybe you actually get upwards of 260 million dollars as it's break even. 300 million dollars would be easily past that. So that's why I would say at this point in time, Romulus looking like it's going to be a box office success so for 20th century studios for disney that is a huge win for them obviously they've got the huge the biggest wins of their year 
with Deadpool Wolverine making $1.1 billion, still making money, $230 million in net profit there. And of course, also the $1.625 billion Dragonaut that is Inside Out 2, right? $439 million in net profits there. So this movie, again, you have a chance of getting upwards of $1.7 billion. Again, this film just continues to march along. So obviously those are the key winners for them there. But you did have some other films that got released that didn't really seem as impressive from Disney uh, from the course of this year. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is a great example of that, right? 20th Century Studios release, $397 million there. That film actually ended up as a $59 million loss for them. Now, again, whether or not it was a loss because of how the production companies split uh, the the amount of money they put into the movie, right? That's how Disney could be saved as they were primarily at more of a distributor on that. There were some other independent production companies that were involved and not just 20th Century Studios and not just Disney or any ancillary Disney companies, uh, but still on paper, definitely not a huge win for them in that movie. And so it's good for them to have a movie like Alien Romulus that they can kind of run home with and say, hey, yeah, look, we did have some movies that made money that weren't Deadpool Wolverine and and, and wasn't uh, Despicable Me Part 2, even though in all of those cases, we're still dealing with films that are either uh, sequels, uh, prequels, threequels, or I guess in this specific case, an interquel, right? And so, yeah, interesting numbers, but hey, Alien Romulus doing pretty well at the box office. What do y'all think? Do you think Alien Romulus is going to be able to break even the box office? Do you think that $300 million is what likely will be the final result? Three to $400 million sounds about right to me, but it is still quite early. We'll have to wait and see what that Monday number drop-off looks like, and then, of course, going on to next weekend, what the week two drop-off actually looks like. And and also, any updated thoughts on Deadpool Wolverine? Right now, I think it's still tracking pretty well to be able to get to the upwards of $1.3 to $1.4 billion. Definitely think that is still on the table for that movie. And again, I think for Inside Out 2, you're looking at it being probably going to edge out either right before 1.7 or getting right to and just past $1.7 billion. And so let me know your thoughts about those and any of the films I mentioned in the comment section down below. If you like this video, smash that like button. Love that fire button over in Aussie. Smash the rumble button as well. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. And again, thank you all very much for watching. If you want to have live updates on box office conversations and other movie topics, please make sure to check out my live stream every Monday evening around 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Usually start time between 7.30, 7.45 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, that is on Mondays. And so if you've been missing out on those streams, please make sure to check those out. Also, I have my Friday Night Tight stream on Nerdrotic every single Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern to whenever, because it goes for quite a long time. And then also the Salty nerd salty saturday stream on the salty nerd podcast channel uh, around 1 p.m eastern time on those days but you guys seriously are amazing have a wonderful rest of your day and as always god bless now for a huge special shout out to all of my chosen of Valhalla members here during the month of August, starting off first with my people on Patreon, Father Luca Illick and Miss Martin Muses. Check out her YouTube channel by the same name, Miss Martin Muses. Also to my subscribe star people, Matt317. Check out his Twitch channel by the same name, Matt317. And also to the K-Man. Check out his website, xtheboundaries.co. And lastly to my YouTube member, Mr. Roy. Shout out to you, good sir. And if you want your name shouted out at the end of every live stream and video, check out the top link in the video description below where you get access to that. Also, you get access to a plethora of other things. You get your name listed at the end of every live stream and video like you saw in those names that came up before this video started. And also access to a giveaways channel that I host over on the Discord server where I give away 4Ks, Steelbooks, Blu-rays, all kinds of stuff. So check that out if you're interested in that. Also, I have an exclusive podcast that I hold at least once a month and uh, it's always a good time and you get extra bonus content with that also so if any of that sounds interesting again check out that top link in the video description below you guys are all amazing and beautiful people have a wonderful rest of your day a blessed august and as always god bless